గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ మేడం సార్స్ అండ్ ఫ్రెండ్స్ టుడే మై టాపిక్ ఈజ్ mitochondrial disease anesthetic implications and uh, propofol infusion syndrome okay mitochondrial disease is one start to be a rare clinical entity now recognized as an important cause of a wide range of neurological cardiac and muscle and endocrine disorders the incidence uh, of this uh, respiratory chain alone disorders disorder of respiratory chain is alone estimated to be 1 per 5000 or uh, live births similar to that of a well known neurological disease high energy requiring tissues are uniquely dependent on the energy delivered by mitochondria and therefore the lowest threshold for displaying symptoms of mitochondrial disease thus mitochondrial dysfunction most commonly affect functions of central nervous system heart and muscular system mitochondrials are the organelles of eukaryotic cells that may have they may have been ancient independent life forms that symbiotically fused with bacteria nearly 2 billion years ago they possess their own dna and ubiquitously present in all cells except erythrocytes they have multiple membranes and folds and carry out of specialized functions they they have the mitochondrial proteins and they are coded by nuclear dna and mitochondrial dna maternal inheritance this mitochondrial diseases can occur as a result of nuclear and mitochondrial dna mutations mitochondria are known as atp powerhouse of cell the primary function is the production of atp via oxidative phosphorylation whereby electrons are passed between different complexes of electron transport chain are important in the other metabolic pathways including krebs cycle urea cycle and beta fatty oxidation and these diseases refer to as affect any system and uh, any mode of by any mode of inheritance uh, so usually these patients in general with uh, myopathy encephalopathy with elevated lactate levels should raise the suspicion of possibility of mitochondrial defect in addition other uh, said other organs may affect it the clinical features mainly neurological and myopathy uh, the features are developmental delay regression weakness fatigability hypotonia spasticity ataxia seizure disorders cardiovascular system is cardiomyopathy conduction abnormalities respiratory hypoventilation central hypoventilation and apnea and uh, respiratory muscle weakness ophthalmic ophthalmoplegia and retinal depigmentation optic atrophy renal renal insufficiency hepatic in, hepatic insufficiency in metabolic diabetes uh, lactic acidosis and uh, um diabetes mellitus hypoparathyroidism hematological manifestations macrocytic anemia neutropenia thrombocytopenia so classification of mitochondrial disease is varied based on their specific electron transport chain uh, complex abnormalities mitochondrial dna or nuclear dna mutations or on clinical phenotypes clinical ca- classification includes melas melas that is mito- mitochondrial encephalopathy L- lactic acidosis and uh, stroke like episodes or mngie mitochondrial neurogastrointestinal encephalopathy or merrrf myoclonic epilepsy with ragged red fibers or kerny sairy syndrome and leg syndrome these are the clinical classification the best diagnostic test is the meisel biopsy however this is carried out only by the genetic test kit is equivocal the meisel biopsies are preferentially done on the vastus lateralis the characteristic finding is 
tagged red fibers or cytochrome c oxidase negative fibers often sought on histochemical staining the other supportive biochemical features include elevated lactate on the blood urine and cerebrospinal fluid and supportive neuroimaging features like stroke like lesions in the non vascular non vascular distributions and diffuse white matter disease the bilateral involvement of deep gray matter nuclei in the basal ganglia and brain stem and midbrain lactate doublet on brain magnetic resonance spectroscopy lactate doublet treatment is the uh, no known cure for mitochondrial disease and treatment is largely supportive includes focusing on optimization of energy production reduction of energy losses and avoidance of toxins uh, elevating the symptoms of monitoring the complications exercise is shown to improve the symptoms and in, improve the strength and increase the mitochondrial content and oxygen uptake nutrition supplementations commonly prescribed is multiple vitamins including cofactor coenzyme q10 alpha lipoic acid l carnitine creatine and certain b vitamins evidence supporting the use of most of these supplements is limited what are the pre operative investigations uh, usually the patients often have a procedures in the operating room for diagnostic and therapeutic purposes such as micelle biopsies and ma mri magnetic resonance and ct scan and endoscopy gastrostomy for creation and strabismus surgeries during pre operative an assessment anesthetist should ascertain a degree of neurological muscular compromise with evidence of res uh, cardio respiratory involvement features to seek on history and examination or the severity of fatigability dysphagia hypoventilation apnea cardiomyopathy and heart blocks pre operative investigations are largely depend on the severity of the disease organs affected and surgery required the useful blood test or full fbc fast blood count full blood count and electrolytes creatinine urea liver function test blood glucose lactate pyruvate and creatine kinase other useful are a spirometry chest x ray blood gas and um, electro ecg echocardiogram it is paramount that these patients are not fasted for prolonged period of time the multidisciplinary consultations consultations may required as patients are often treated by variety of medical specialist intraoperative mitochondrial disease in these diseases to minimize the metabolic stress of surgery risk of metabolic encephalopathy which is often triggered by the intercurrent illness and fasting it is important to avoid uh, intraoperative hypotension hypoxia and hypoglycemia hypothermia to maintain glucose homeostasis glucose containing solution should be administered with regular blood glucose measurements the exceptions to this rule is in patients with disorders of pyruvate metabolism and ketogenic or on ketogenic diets for seizure control for seizure control and such patient should have a glucose administered with caution and to be monitored to ensure they do not develop any hyperglycemia or lactic acidosis lactose containing solutions such as uh, compound ringer lactate solutions are best avoided for intraoperative measurement of lactate may be useful mar marker of metabolic stress post operative good or post operative analgesia is important in patients as uh, in pain response to surgery may may worsen the lactic acidosis as a result of multimodal analgesic approaches should be used the reasonable take drug safety profile in the uh, mitochondrial diseases uh, hello what happened drug safety profile the concerns have been raised regarding the safety uh, different drugs in uh, safety of different drugs used in anesthesia they demonstrate biological uh, bio evidence is the direct mitochondrial inhibition but the clinical implications of these the following section uh, next uh, we will discuss uh, each individual drug 
volatile anesthetics have been shown to inhibit complex one of electron transport chain in the in vitro studies studies correlating biological effects of clinical uh, one have been spaced a study looking at 16 children with biopsy proven mitochondrial diseases found that one patient with the complex one mutation and another with leak syndrome have increased sensitivity to volatile anesthetics although there have been no further studies to illustrate this question a retrospective review demonstrated use of normal clinical ranges of in inspiratory sevoflurin concentration without harm and uh, there is a pause, uh, uh, before in 90, 1985 there is a, a the um, concerns regarding association of mitochondrial diseases and malignant hyperthermia a single case report of Jap in japan a uh, two year old child with mitochondrial diseases who developed muscle rigidity hyperkalemia hyperthermia after a general anesthetic that include hadothen and saxamethonium despite wide spread of use of volatile anesthetics there have been no further case reports of malignant hyperthermia in patients with mitochondrial diseases so malignant hyperthermia association of united states recommends volatile anesthetic should not be avoided out of concern for possible malignant hyperthermia susceptibility intravenous anesthesia propofol inhibit the multiple complexes of electron transport chain and transport of free fatty acids across the mitochondrial membrane propofol probably used more as commonly as a part of non triggering anesthetic in early 1990s when it is thought these patients are susceptible to malignant hyperthermia however concerns are started to rise approximately 20 years ago with the case reports suggesting that patients with propofol infusion syndrome had a biochemical abnormality similar to that of mitochondrial diseases further case reports have been described development of propofol infusion syndrome in a patient with acquired carnitine deficiency and others with mitochondrial diseases who were given propofol infusions the pathophysiology of propofol infusion syndrome is unclear our evidence suggests that mitochondrial defects in atp production most likely the cause some authors suggested that patients who develop propofol infusion syndrome may have subclinical forms of mitochondrial disease and others have recommended that patients who have, who develop propofol infusion syndrome should be screened for these mitochondrial diseases evidence regarding propofol is conflicting a recent review suggests that propofol boluses are probably safe in the mitochondrial diseases infusions may not be others opinion that assessment of propofol literature the propofol is the not the anesthetic agent of choice a careful titration of propofol boluses in patients with without severe form of mitochondrial diseases and without critical Ill, critical illness is the probably safe propofol infusion should be probably avoided the use of keto ketamine and dexamethasone and benzodiazepines in patients with mitochondrial diseases has not been associated with any harm in the titration uh, neuromuscular blocking drugs concerns surrounding uh, neuromuscular block is related mainly to the, their pharmacodynamic profile depolarizing like saxamethasone should be avoided in the given risk of an exaggerated hyperkalemic response there are conflicting reports that patients with mitochondrial diseases have an increased sensitivity to non depolarizing neuromuscular blocking drugs although some studies report increased sensitivity compared with general population others have no difference it recommended that any child with hypotonia should be considered at a risk of variable response to muscle relaxation and dose adjusted accordingly almost all recommendations include use of a nerve stimulator a reversal of neuromuscular blockage with neostigmine and sogamedex has been associated with not harm no harm local anesthetics in vitro animal studies demonstrated bupivacaine inhibit the transport of these free fatty acids similar to that of propofol however evidence of harm in humans is scant there is a single case report of an intraoperative bradyarrhythmia following a subcutaneous infiltration of 0.3 mg per bupivacaine in a patient with the carnitine deficiency Sus- subsequent there have been no further advanced reports reported in humans to the author's knowledge furthermore multiple institutions 
report using bupivacaine in muscle biopsies in patients with mitochondrial diseases without harm. A recent review of articles suggests that there have been advantages to the use of local anesthesia as it provides analgesia without respiratory depressant effect of opioids. However, it, is, it does not recommend any one agent over another. Opioids have not have not, not been implicated in having a significant biochemical effects on mitochondria. There are no case reports of harm associated with its use. However, caution is generally advised with regard to their respiratory depressant effect. Remifentin is particularly advantageous in this regard, given its favorable pharmacokinetic profile. So, in, in uh, uh, conclusion, in mitochondrial diseases, so minimizing the preoperative fasting to avoid hypovolemia and decreased blood glucose levels and increased use of fatty acids. Increasing the cautious use of muscle relaxant in those with pre existing myopathy and decreased respiratory drive. Avoiding the use of lactate, and some patients have difficulty metabolizing the lactate, may become estrotic. Avoiding the tourniquet and pressure points to minimize the region of poor perfusion and oxygen delivery. Avoiding swings in body temperature as mitochondrial patients are unable to adopt well either hypothermia and hyperthermia. Slow titration of volatile anesthetics and parental anesthetics to minimize the hemodynamic changes. Using measures to decrease the post-operative uh, nausea and vomiting by doing hydration, opiate sparing techniques, and analgesia and anesthetics regional clocks. Other uh, in conjunction, I would like to tell about post propofol in, uh, infusion syndrome. Propofol is a non barbiturate intravenous anesthetic agent, which is approved used in 1989. With many general anesthetic agents, it produces hypnotic effects by potentiating the effect of inhibitory neuro inhibiting uh, GABA. Propofol is widely used for the induction and maintenance of general anesthesia and has uh, many properties. Uh, it used as a sedative agent in critical ill. Now, of 90% of propofol used worldwide for sedation, and these properties include rapid onset and offset, sedative, anxiolytic, anti-emetic, anti-convulsant, beneficial in the anti-inflammatory, antioxidant properties. It has an excellent safety profile, but it rare potentially fat, fatal complication called as propofol infusion syndrome is recognized. The first case reported uh, this syndrome is 1990. Uh, a three-year-old child in Denmark and two, uh, two years later, a case series published with the British Medical Journal describing similar presentation in uh, five young children. Uh, USA um, uh, United States Food Drug Administration study that uh, here failed to find a link between the propofol and further risks, but propofol use as pediatric sedation was abandoned shortly afterward, explaining why subsequent literature feature mostly adult cases. Similar presentations in adults started to be reported during late 1990s, starting in 96, with the case of 30-year woman admitted exacerbation of asthma who went on receive sedation in invasive ventilation. Definition of propofol syndrome, in, it is early definition coined by Bray in 1998, an article aimed to define some of the common clinical features of uh, these cases uh, in children suffered adverse uh, consequences with although not proven caused by a high dose or long term uh, propofol infusions. Although there has been no universally accepted definitions of uh, propofol infusion syndrome, early definition of us follow occurrence of a acute refractory bradycardia progressing to asystole, uh, associated prop with propofol infusion in the presence of one or more following, that is metabolic acetosis, rhabdomyolysis and myoglobinuria, a lipemic plasma and enlarged liver or fatty liver. The description including refractory bradycardia leading to asystole in this phrasing was felt to limit the practical value. So alternative definition has been described based on the primary features and secondary features. Uh, the later definition is follows. A propofol infusion syndrome occurs in critically ill patients receiving propofol infusions, typically either by high dose, five milligrams per kg per hour, 
for long duration 48 hours characterized by one or more of the following that is unexplained metabolic acidosis rhabdomyolysis ecg changes with or without acute kidney injury hyperkalemia lipidemia lipidemia cardiac failure fever elevated liver enzymes or raised lactate hemphil et al described above class clinical features into primary and secondary features primary or the uh, st elevation in uh, leads v1 to v3 as per burgoda syndrome however they can include any form of ventricular or supraventricular tachycardia bundle branch block or bradycardia furthermore severe new onset metabolic acidosis uh, often contributed by renal dysfunction and raised serum lactate the third primary feature is rhabdomyolysis and development of acute kidney injury often followed the primary phases or uh, features are ecg changes new onset severe metabolic acidosis rhabdomyolysis secondary features are lipidemia hyperkalemia acute kidney injury fever cardiac dysfunction deranged liver enzymes raised serum lactate uh, what are the risk factors for propofol infusion syndrome these are thought to be uh, risk factors and cumulative one is the cumulative dose Uh, there is plenty of evidence suggest that linear relationship between the cumulative, cumulative dose of propofol the quantity and uh, propofol cumulative dose of quantity and severity features although definition is given above 5 mg per kg hour and longer duration there have been many cases reported lower cumulative doses also obesity um, the pharmacokinetic studies suggest that propofol should be based on patient's lean body weight rather than actual body weight um, there have been no clear relation between the obesity and development of uh, the syndrome but the dose for sedation should be calculated based on lean body weight cases have been reported in which administration of propofol based on the actual body weight has been associated with uh, uh, the syndrome It relatively overdose of propofol and steroids known to contribute to development of critical illness myopathy possibly triggering enzymes that cause direct muscle damage rhabdomyolysis seen in uh, propofol infusion syndrome may occur as a result of similar mechanism there is a certain link between the steroid therapy and uh, development of propofol infusion syndrome catecholamines uh, there is a link of between the use of vasopressors and development of pris it is thought that propofol clearance is increased by the raised levels of endogenous catecholamines seen in brain injured patients and uh, patients with hyperdynamic circulation sepsis and uh, sirs it is thought that administration of higher doses of higher inotropic agents and vasopressor infusions there is increased clearance that uh, reduce the therapeutic effect of propofol leading to need to increase the administration of dose of propofol whether this causal effect is not clear acidosis due to propofol infusion syndrome may impair the vaso vasomotor and vasomotor tone leading to increased vasopressor requirement patients with critical illness there is a neuroendocrine stress response to critical illness causes surge in the catecholamines and glucocorticoids which implicated as risk factors from the risk factors for the propofol infusion syndrome these hormones modulate the activity of lipase enzymes promoting the breakdown of triglycerides into glycerol and free fatty acids and furthermore a critical illness there is a shift of carb shift from carbohydrate to lipid based substrates for energy production which also increases the free fatty acids this is the importance of free fatty acids are key substrate for the pathophysiological pathophys mechanism of propofol infusion syndrome and other is the lipid overload it is possible to in patients a relative lipid overload associated with parental nutrition propofol infusions and or both lead to accumulation of unused free fatty acids there should be adequate source of carbohydrate to balance this out to suppress the excessive lipolysis perhaps in the form of dextrose infusion this may be one of the reasons that children with relatively limited glycogen stores exhibit an increased susceptibility to propofol infusion syndrome 
so pathophysiology is exact underlying uh, pris is not fully understood but propofol uncouples oxidative dephosphorylation and energy production in the mitochondria as well as inhibit the electron transfer in the myositic electron transport chain leading to disturbance in the atp production cellular hypoxia acidosis most of existing evidence to point most likely pathway for etiology of pris and free fatty acids or which are essential fuel for these myocytes during stress cannot be used for the when oxidative phosphorylation is uncoupled they can build up and act as a pro erythmogenic substance contributing to cardiac dysfunction in the in this syndrome propofol antagonizes the beta adrenergic receptors and calcium channel binding further depressing the cardiac function causing the degree of resistance to inotropic agents it has been suggested that pathophysiology resembles certain mitochondrial diseases such as median chain uh, sl coenzyme dehydrogenase deficiency suggesting the genetic predisposition to pris may exist so ultimately uncoupling effects on respiratory chain and re resultant imbalance between the energy demand and utilization causes accumulation of lactate and my myocyte necrosis leads to metabolic acidosis cardiac dysfunction and rhabdomyolysis it is known that risk of uh, is increases with increasing dose of propofol in terms of both infusion rate and duration of in, uh, infusion uh, the existing literature recommends infusion rates less than 5 mg per kg although most manufacturers it is usually recommend lower the infusion rate to 4 mg per kg also it makes sense to follow recommendation it is worth noting it worth noting that cases of propofol infusion syndrome have been described after only few hours of propofol or infusion rates much lower than co administration of such opioids use of additional alternative agents sedative recommends when high is another way of control dose of administered propofol high doses close monitoring of the ph lactate and creatinine kinase is important and propofol should be avoided in patients with proven or suspected mitochondrial diseases because of resemblance to pathophysiology and given the role of free fatty acids in propofol it is thought prudent to ensure continuous carbohydrate supply to patients with receiving propofol infusions for sedation treatment is lack of clear definition inevitable uh, presence of confounding organ dysfunction in critically ill patients there is no established guide, guidelines for the treatment but the condition is difficult to treat awareness its existence risk factors for its development along with high index of suspicion for clinical signs in at risk patients is critical some institutions monitor ck levels daily after 48 hours of propofol infusion once the diagnosis is priorities stopping the further administration of propofol commencing alternative sedation support to therapy for treat the complications eliminate the propofol from the body by and cardiovascular support by using um, in the form of inotropic agents and vasopressors may be needed arrhythmia treated in line with the standard uh, treatment algorithm catecholamine resistant cardiac shock reported possibly occurrence of uh, calcium channel blocking effect of propofol so use of extra corporeal uh, support is reported in such cases electrical pacing may be limited use possibly because of direct nature uh, tox direct nature of myocyte dimers metabolic acidosis should be addressed as it propagate arrhythmias may reduce the uh, effective treatment as well potentially decrease the effects of vasoactive agents this is and this is done by ensuring adequate minute ventilation adequate intravascular volume early administration of continuous hemofiltration so hemofiltration has the role in the elimination of propofol from the body propofol is metabolized in the liver to water soluble phenol derivatives which are of then excreted in the urine hemofiltration cannot eliminate highly lipophilic propofol but it eliminates water soluble metabolites as well as help in the management of acidosis and hyperkalemia 
which may be cosmic cardiac dysfunction rhabdomyolysis limited evidence to suggest role for bicarbonate other than temporary measures for the hyperkalemia in the presence of metabolic stress adequate fluid therapy is needed to treat the myoglobinuria in summary propofol has a pharmacokinetic properties that makes a good choice for sedation in critically ill but it's a use is associated with definite incidence of propofol infusion syndrome so can present in number of ways but the primary clinical features are mesidosis metabolic acidosis ecg changes and rhabdomyolysis the condition is uncommon no diagnostic test or antidote a treatment is supported so high index of suspicion should be maintained in any patient particularly in those receiving high dose or pronged infusion with risk factors for development of breast doses should be limited to 4 mg per kg per hour in all cases thank you thank you everyone for thank you thank you everyone good morning Sir, no. Sir, no. you told uh, propofol is anxiolytic uh, yeah it is in the article sir hmm? it is just in the article sir so maybe article. Uh, just mentioned in uh, that article so i mean yeah in world federation of society of anesthesia it is given okay. that article <laughs> what is the ideal in the dose of for propofol infusion ideal dose sir you should you told you should not exceed 4 mg ah uh, yes not exceed mm. but what is the actual dose 2 mg and 0.5 mg and for induction mean? that is for induction for infusion ah uh, yeah for infusion i think it is 75 to 150 micrograms per kg per minute uh i i uh, okay sir so, you know uh, I, uh, I, actually i that i included this because of uh, it related to some hematochondrial diseases so i, I just include it actually i think propofol is not not using for any infusions in every anywhere i think is it sir uh, i could not get your point what is what uh, i mean what nowadays no, nobody using propofol as infusion in icu sedation as previous previously they used it to do previously okay. Mm. now they are now no one using it in propofol infusion syndrome convulsions you are not mentioned okay sir okay it actually occurred in a children icu where it, the infusion exceeded 72 hours mm mm-hmm. mm-hmm. and uh, presented with seizures okay even though it is having anti convulsant effect mm if the infusion is as you told it is exceeds more than 5 mg per kg per hour it mm. may produce uh, convulsions in children okay so did you see any any the syndrome in where you never used uh, propofol infusion in icu but we usually use in neuro surgeries for uh, aneurysm clipping and uh, for uh-huh. maintaining the anesthesia yes yeah, in kg history i did once uh, only once <laughs> 
ओके हाउ इज द टॉपिक सर माइडोकेंड्रियल डिजीजेस इट इज इंपॉर्टेंट not for just to know i i just share this uh, topic there are so many articles uh, in this in mm. so what are the any dnb students uh, what are the drugs now commonly used for icu sedation no one no one in the group i think rohini yes i see you sedation is a short notes both for mds and dnbs yeah yeah okay sir sir any in ah. benzodiazepines ah sir text mm, you told propofol is not preferred for infusions ha huh? yes sir in mitochondrial diseases in mitochondrial mm -hmm. only boluses small boluses but in the normal people without mitochondrial disease propofol infusion sometimes we, we, we given during pg time also no we are not that much people in non mitochondrial disease it is preferred drug for infusion because context sensitivity of life is very less hmm context sensitivity of life hmm. so procedural sedation also we can give uh, uh, give the infusion of propofol Mm, procedural sedation. We have to check. And, uh, oh. Vijay, this is a good topic actually. As you can see, the incidence is uh, one in four thousand to five thousand. Yeah, yeah. It needs to it needs to be addressed. Mitochondrial diseases in uh, particularly in children. Uh, if if it is not detected and the mm. if it's a mild disease, uh, mm. there is there are no complications. But if it is a severe disease, there are Uh, mm -hmm. grave complications if you don't know prior uh, and we don't prepare ourselves uh, for the surgery and anesthesia giving anesthesia and so uh, as of now actually i am in kochi yesterday also mm -hmm. one topic was there regarding the mitochondrial diseases in the cardiac patients i mean pediatric cardiology yeah mm -hmm. yeah there was a topic like they are not using propofol at all in the mitochondrial diseases even mm -hmm. at the slightest dose they are not using mm -hmm. okay can it be used below 6 years for induction without mitochondrial disease we are using routinely but uh, we, are, some, we are using but we are using sir but, but uh, better not to use below 6 years proper any particular reason sir I think this is <laughs> maybe. I don't know. I, that's why I'm asking. Mm. Uh, this first time I'm hearing that the six years. Actually, we are using here. Mm. Yeah, so, so many institutes they are using, 
but uh, in the old uh, miller institute it is, they told he has written that below 6 years better not to use after telling after shaker told <laughs> better to use other drugs than in children. Mm, pentothal is better. Pentothal sodium. Okay. I, I prefer ketamine sodium in children. Ah, yeah, ketamine. It's a wonder drug. Yeah, yeah, ketamine. Thank you, Vijay. It's a very good topic. Thank oh, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, I have a totally, I think, uh, right. Okay. These two articles, uh, uh, the World Federation of Society in Asia, two articles. But... Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone. For... Shrikant? Shrikant is busy, I think. Shrikant? ಕಿರಣ್
Hallo? ఇవరకు మనం కాన్ఫరెన్స్ వస్తున్నారు అంటే అదే వాళ్ళందరూ పేమెంట్స్ అంతా ఫోన్ పే గూగుల్ పే ద్వారా చేస్తారంట